Thank you very much for coming. We are live. No swearing in the crowd. Uh, because it's a big primary day. This is what they call a Junior Tuesday. And by the way, I know to a Michael Jackson, that is not what you may think. Um, it's, uh, it's strictly about politics, this is. Uh, but uh, the, the results are in, and uh, uh, Bob Dole is the big winner. I think he won all eight states today. And uh, they, big repercussions. Uh, Lamar Alexander, they say, will drop out tomorrow. And uh, Pat Buchanan uh, shot himself in his bunker. So, <laughs> yeah, Bob Dole is finally on a roll. Uh, Saturday, he won the Puerto Rican primary, which was, uh, you know, he, he did, which was very bad news for uh, Steve Forbes, because if you can't even buy votes in Puerto Rico, <laughs> I mean, you know, just in the, in the duty free. Um, <laughs> Actually, the guy last week who had the most trouble, do you know Alan Keyes? He is one of the sort of marginal Republican candidates, but uh, he was not allowed in on the debate that they had in Atlanta, so he went on a hunger strike. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't a hunger strike. He just uh, went to Denny's and couldn't get served. But <laughs> he, uh... <laughs> no, he... he... <laughs> He tried to break into the debate, and they arrested him. They, they hauled him away, but he said he would not leave. His, he, you know, his big issue is anti-abortion. That's his, he said he would stay on message. In fact, he said today to the press, fetus, don't fail me now. <laughs> I'll give it two points for clever. I mean, come on. Just two points. Well, anybody from uh, Alaska, they have that big uh, dog race up there, the Iditarod, is that the way that's pronounced? Okay, well, the big champion there, who'd uh, won a few times, was disqualified because his lead dog died. And uh, the dog was a tremendous athlete and uh, left a note uh, warning others <laughs> not to imitate his uh, promiscuous lifestyle. <laughs> And a race, the, the race officials up there said the, the death of the dog could have been prevented, uh, possibly by not making it pull a sled 1,500 miles through the snow. <laughs> and uh, finally, we have a happy birthday as an order. Today is the 60th birthday, big 6-0 for Marion Barry, the D.C. Oh, they... they... <laughs> They gave him a big uh, surprise party. Everybody yelled out and yelled surprise, and out of habit, he yelled, the bitch set me up. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. It's all been standardized for your protection. Another good crowd, two days in a row. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. <laughs> Let's meet the panel. First, he's an interactive artist and musician, as well as host of the syndicated radio show, The Difference. His new CD is The Individualist, Todd Rundgren. Yeah. Hey, man. Good to see you. That's a first. <laughs> Had to happen. Somebody had to come on barefoot. Glad it was you. <laughs> That's going too far. <laughs> she co-starred in the critically acclaimed film The Joy Luck Club and currently stars in The Single Guy Thursdays at 8.30 NBC. Ming Na Wen right over here. <laughs> Hello. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for coming by. All right, the daughter of our 40th president, she's also a best-selling author and political analyst, Maureen Reagan. Hey, Maureen, good to see you again. Sit right down. And finally, the chief strategist for the 1992 Clinton campaign. He's also a Nike spokesman. Wow. Co-star of the new film, The People vs. Larry Friend, and author of the new book, We're Right, They're Wrong, James Carville. Wow. 
Did you ever think it could be so popular? Nah, nah, I'll tell you, it's yeah, unbelievable, it's huh? Let's get this book going here, you know, like uh, hucksterism. <laughs> Well, the uh, the results are in. Bob yeah. Dole had the day of his life today. Right. Won all eight primaries. Is it over now? Is he has he got locked up? Well, it all have been passing around the same lemon. You know, they also bit over the Republican side. So I guess he won the lemon award. And yeah, I think it's over. I think it was sort of over before it started. Here lies Bob Dole. You know, he beat Alan Keyes. I mean, what are you gonna say? <laughs> Marine, you want to post it? Oh, I'd love to. Yes, um, I think that certainly this was a, a big step for Senator Dole, but I don't think it's over yet. I'm a Californian. I yeah. want to race in this state. I won't want it over till the 26th of March. You don't, you don't want Dole? Oh, I didn't say I didn't want Dole. I just don't want the race over till after the California primary, so we get to see but a campaign out here. But if you don't want the race over, who is left there that's going to... Be well, Buchanan will be in it. He, he has said that he... So you want a race doing... between Dole and Buchanan? You want Buchanan? I think Forbes will be in it through California. Forbes. So I think you've got three people to talk. Do you have interest in a TV station or something out here? <laughs> Everybody wants one. I mean, you just want to fight for the sake of a fight uh, until the end of the month? No, it isn't a fight for the sake of a fight. It's a discussion uh -huh. for she the sake like, of me informing she like people. Me. She's a political junkie. We just want uh, this thing to go on. I we just like, watch I like to see a campaign. We have now on the Republican side in California had a contested primary uh, in the presidential since 1964. And if we want to encourage more people to vote, we're going to have to make it interesting for them. One way to make it interesting is to make it competitive. Ah, okay. So. Well, You're not implying that Buchanan converses, though, do you? No. <laughs> I've never heard him converse with anyone. No, he talks. Well, well, he attacks, yeah. Now, you yeah. said you want to encourage people to vote. There is an issue for us uh, that I probably would take issue with you on that because you're probably for more people voting. I'm against it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm for more democracy, actually. I do think it's a pretty good well, thing, actually. But, uh, yes. Excuse me for being such a radical. <laughs> You're excused, but here's You're the in thing. America. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, they, now, Oregon just had an election where they were allowed to mail in the votes. Right. And uh, they are now allowing college students to register when they register for class. They're mm -hmm. probably stoned when they do it. <laughs> um, they're making it very easy to vote. Right. I don't think that is what the founding fathers wanted. No, it wasn't. They wanted, they had mail suffered. You had to be a property owner in a mail to vote. Why don't we go, you want to go back to that? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know... You couldn't vote unless you were a property, and you couldn't vote unless you were male. That, that was the way it was when the country started. You know, countries have a funny thing. They progress as they go along. I mean, they, you know? <laughs> yeah, but... also, also, the founding fathers had slavery. They counted a slave as three-fifths of a person. I don't think that's a good idea either. You know, not every idea they had that I totally agree with. And I Emmanuel think, Lewis. Yeah, the, the country... <laughs> We progress, yeah. I think it's good to have more people vote. I think, I think democracy is important. I think it's important that people participate in it. The more that vote, the fine with me. I mean, th I think it's a desirable result. But uh, the founding fathers had an electoral college. They considered the idea of a direct election right. of a president, and they ruled it out because they foresaw just what was happening, that people would vote for a bunch of bull issues. They'd vote for the pledge and who wears a red tie and scandals and crap like that. And they wanted to put some sort of a buffer with it. They, they didn't think democracy oh. should go this far. Everything has a moderation. Uh, uh, uh. The real reason for the Electoral College is still an important part of the, the process, whether it is reformed to be by congressional district or by, by some other means. The Electoral College means that you have to campaign in every region of the country, that little states have a voice as much as big states, that you can't just go to the six most populous states in the country and campaign and end up being president of the United States, but that you have to pay attention to the people in North Dakota and in Wyoming and these different places. There was no North Dakota then. That's right. right. But, <laughs> no, but there was Rhode Island. But also a completely uninformed vote has well, no, equal weight with uninformed vote. Would you, would you be in favor of us only people with PhDs can vote? No. I, I mean, how do you say, you, you, you say, in this country, you know, you, if, you, if you have a right, no matter if you, if you didn't finish high school, you can vote. That ought to be it. If you can fight for this country, if you pay taxes for this country, you ought to be able to vote and you ought to be encouraged to vote. Because every time that all of the, quote, smart people, you know, all of the geniuses do something, they botch it up. They were the people that figured out the SNL stuff. Okay, you know? we have to take a break, and we'll all pursue this when we come back.
talking about the mail-in votes and whether you should make voting easy. I'm not against democracy. I'm saying when you make democracy easy, I think you're sending the wrong message. And the accent is always on more voting, more voting. You never hear anything about knowing well, what you're you voting about. What about the poll tax? Let's bring that back. Let's charge people to vote. That way you can keep all the riffraff out, you know? I think you should charge people to vote. <laughs> I mean, is that what you I think what you should do is charge people to vote, charge them like five bucks to vote, and then the winners get to take all the money that the losers paid into the system. <laughs> Essentially, so it's an impetus for everybody to kind of get out and vote at that sort point. Sort of a, um, um, what is it, a, a, a lottery. Yeah, well, of. we all benefit, you know. Oh, makes circle. sense. Except for the knuckleheads who voted for the loser. <laughs> and I want to get back to what James said earlier yes. about, you know, how um, sometimes just because you're smart doesn't necessarily mean your vote is as good. Because I think a lot of times the generation that I'm in, we're too book smart for our own good. I mean, it paralyzes us because we have so many choices and we can... We can talk ourselves out of so many things. So just because yes. you're smart doesn't necessarily mean you, you know think, what you're doing. But if people think, as polls have showed, that 15% of our national income goes to foreign aid, when it's actually less than 1%, they are probably more likely to vote for a guy who says, I'm against yeah, giving foreign aid like you, Buchanan does. But, but the problem is, is you don't need less people voting. You need more information. That's what in I'm saying. In the media, whose responsibility... In the media, in the, you see, I've been in the meeting the all the time. I know what the, 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 the information is. The people, oh, like if, you if can't they get, get the information if you, you want it. Go, look, all of the intelligent people, you know, sit around, smoke a pipe, contemplate and everything. These are the people that brought you the SNL crisis. These are the people that got you. Go read David Halverson's book, The Best and the Brightest. It wasn't the common person, the average person that got in Vietnam. It was everybody from Harvard and Yale and all this. You know, all the intelligent people got 50,000 people killed over there because we will listen to them. I tell you what, we're a hell of a lot better off so, and there's a hell of a lot more sense in people. Throw, in throw our lot in with the stupid people. That's well, your point. No, it's not, 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 not stupid. It gets, people no, got I, other things in their lives to worry about is what percent of GDP goes to, you know, X, Y, and Z. But they know, they know when they're getting a the shaft. They know when it, people come in and they want to cut Medicare and give themselves a tax cut. And they know that's not good for them, and they want to vote on that. They're not going to listen to that. But them. James is, is absolutely right on this point, and that is that you had, we had all this hype and run-up to an Iowa caucus, which delegates won't be selected till June, right. and a New Hampshire primary with an infinitesimal number of delegates. And then all of a sudden, the network said, okay, let's have this over. We're just going to, we're only going to cover a couple of people in this race. We're not interested in it anymore. I mean, if you'd let people know what candidates are saying, they will make informed choices. But if you, if you only give them sound bites, and if your idea of covering a presidential campaign of eight candidates is to cover two of them, then you are not going to have an informed electorate. Hey, Mari, I, I want to make a, I want to make a point. And your dad ran president. All of these, it's in Iowa, is the best place to go. It's a very informed electorate. The farmers listen to public radio when they're out there, you know, toiling in the pastures or something. Well, Buchanan did pretty good in, in Iowa. I mean, and they go to caucuses. Not only that, but they have the to go. those are the that you love so much. No, I didn't. No, I'm those saying. Those aren't the pipe smokers. I don't, it's not. They're not smoking pipe until uh, the what field. I'm telling I never you saw is, that. What I'm telling you is. Hoeing and smoking? What I'm saying in Iowa, in Iowa, where you have this sort of informed electorate, the results are pretty much the same as everywhere else. I'm just saying to you is, is I wouldn't be so enamored with credentialism, and I wouldn't be so enamored with the sort of elites in the intelligentsia of this country. I think people are perfectly capable. I didn't think they made the right decision. I'm in, talking in about just basic information. Well, what? And when you have to Should go, you give people when a you test to vote, when you have to go, I think. If you have to go to the polling place, it's like, not, go, it's like going to the movies. I don't agree with you. You know what? When you go to the movies, you watch it, you pay attention, it's right. important. When it's just on in your living room, you're doing any number I, of things. I, I, you go I, to the bathroom. Yeah. I don't, you want to get people go to the bathroom when they're voting? I don't agree. I, I, I tend to. Some people are. Some I think people you're drawing are. an unnecessary well, line. <laughs> I you know, some people think the choice is about the same. You know, I mean, what can I say? Go ahead, I'm sorry. I think that, you know, you're drawing an unnecessarily divisive line between so-called smart people and stupid people No, you're as well. drawing that line. No, I'm not I, drawing that line. I didn't say, I, I, I just said that, that any distinction, 
the, when you say that, you know, like uh, intellectuals or something are the problem with the system, all I, I know is use that when, word. The, when the Cambodians when the Cambodians come in, they kill all the intellectuals. When, when a fascist regime comes in, they kill all the artists and intellectuals. Killing intellectuals. Right off the bat. It's that, kind know, of a long like way from the motor voters yeah. to politics. Like, <laughs> I think that's. I'm sorry, I misunderstood the argument. I'm not quite that. Maybe I lost so the you. argument was whether that people who are. Who, who have the intelligence and the concern to make themselves informed, whether they're more qualified to vote it, it, than people who don't give, well, a, they are. give a damn about well, something. That's some just a basic concern. bone marrow knowledge, which they don't encourage. Rock the voters all. Hey, vote, vote, vote. Doesn't care how much you know. And it's another case of everybody uh, accenting your rights, but not your responsibilities. Democracy intones some responsibility and we should take it. I'm sorry to get the last word and I have to take a break. If you'd like to be a member of our studio audience in California, call 213. Okay, it is a primary night, so let's talk about the one issue that really has emerged in this election as the issue, which is the one that Pat Buchanan raised, which is all about corporate downsizing and the economic anxiety. And uh, one argument goes that if you want to have a dynamic economy, Anxiety and insecurity is going to be part of it. And when politicians, including your man or Pat Buchanan, whoever, promise solutions, they're just creating cynicism because the government really can't do anything about the economy. They've proved that over and over again. They're so promise solutions is stupid. Why not just live with it? <laughs> Go ahead, James. <laughs> you know, yeah. all of the people that say that are all the people that are doing well. The truth of the matter is, is look, if you can, if, 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 and there, if people say it, maybe right, if, if somebody puts, you, you produce a record, a company produces one of your records, or, or a record, they say, gee, you ought to shame the, the company that does that. That may be fine. A company uh, takes health ins insurance away from its employees, it raids its pension fund, maybe you ought to shame the country, company that does that. Maybe you could just publicly say, if you go buy a product from XYZ, you ought to know these people have taken 20,000 people away from health insurance. They've raided the pension fund for these people. They've taken a tax break to close a plant in this country to move it to some other country. And maybe that kind of knowledge that consumers have and people have might change some opinions about some of this. But all of the, all of the, all, you know, all of these, all of the people that say, oh, this is just the way that it goes. All the people that, that, that do well in this. There's a lot of people out there. And there's really, of course, there's a lot of things you can do. One thing you can do is, is you can have health insurance for people when they lose their job. Okay. No, that's don't, not make a, don't make a speech. I'm not I'm making not. a speech. You asked me a question. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're making you a speech. Okay. Yeah, right. There you go. And who knows better? Well, you gave me the kind of question. Well, you... <laughs> downsizing is a fact of life, an economic fact of life. But what's happening now is we have a consolidation with the downsizing, where you have banks buying each other and you have companies yes. buying each other. And as a result, you lose the competition because if, if this company is downsizing, now there's not the other company to go to to get a job. And I think that I, I would think that we would all agree that, um, that there should be a responsibility and the responsibility should be to look at employees and say to them, you know, maybe Maybe some of you would like to work part-time, or maybe we could consolidate these um, uh, benefits here or but something in order to save, save more jobs. What and the I think workers would go for that. is that if I don't make my company efficient, then there'll be a takeover, and then nobody will have a job. They well, but just, that's, that takes you back to what I said, that the biggest problem we have is the consolidation, the idea that, that everybody's buying up everything. There's only going to be about four companies well, in the What do you do to protect country? this? I'm confused. The, the, the Republican candidate, Pat Buchanan, I thought the Republicans were always for letting big business do what they will. He's for stepping in. Well, everyone knows the symptoms, but nobody has the guts to Shut name it. the disease. Uh, what is the disease? The disease is the fact that capitalism as a system is running out of fuel. In order for capitalism to work, well, what, you need... What's, what's got fuel? You need, Socialism? <laughs> you, need, you need cheap, unproductive labor. You need so, cheap, unproductive yeah, labor, ass. which we've run out of. We've got to go to under, other countries to find. You need unlimited natural resources, which we've run out of, and the whole world is running out of. The market is stabilizing because world population is coming down, so the market's not expanding. Your labor's demanding more pay. This capitalism thing can't work. You can't continually ask people to work for less than the market value of their labor, so somebody at the top of the pyramid can, can, can get $50 million bonuses out of the system. Well, it I just won't work anymore. Well, wait a minute. Okay, I'm wait sorry, a minute. I have to take a break because we're terribly behind and we're live. We'll be back. Okay, let me
me thank these great folks and tell you tomorrow we'll have Cheech Marin, Dweezil Zappa, Kathy Ladman, and Justin Romando, gay for Buchanan. Um, <laughs> that's, what the man, that's what the man is. Don't miss that. Be there. Um, but yeah, once again, you folks have tried this. to uh, cast me as the part of the bad guy. I'm not saying it's good, this downsize or anything like that. I'm just saying when politicians propose proposals that will supposedly cure this, they are just creating cynicism because politicians can never affect the Hold on. No, that was no. the same thing that people said when you can't do anything about the environment and they started the EPA and the environment is about 50 times better That's in this country. Wait, wait a minute, hold on, let me finish. Go, go, get, you want to make a point, then as soon as I make a point back, you want to say I'm sloganeering and giving a speech before I can get anything out of my mouth. That's the same thing with 27 percent of the people in this country, poverty, elderly lived in poverty in 1965. And today we have 11 percent. I mean, a, 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 that, that is always what the status quo people say. Gee, just don't do anything. There's nothing that we can do about it. There are things you can do about it. You can give people that lose their job health insurance. You can give people student loans. You can give them vouchers. You can train them. The more you learn, the more you earn. There's a gazillion things that you can do to give people the tools that they need to adjust in this kind of economy. You can do things in the tax code that matter. You can say if, a, if, 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 if the head of a corporation wants to pay himself 100 times more than he pays his workers, that's fine. But we're not subsidizing that by letting him write that salary off. You can certainly do that. Yes. And uh, I would agree with all those steps, except they are not going to change the fundamental fact that this downsizing will keep going you on. You know, if, if, if we would have had wage growth in this country at 1.2% only since 1973, we would have a balanced budget today. And if you change little things over a long period of time, you yield some pretty big results in this country. And I'll tell you what, you may not think as much, but you tell somebody that's got a kid with leukemia and they lose their job and they get to keep their health insurance, it's a pretty big damn big thing to them, I'll guarantee you that. But just remember, Bill, that 90% of the, the new jobs... Now I'm against leukemia, kid.